Well, greetings once again. It is March 2023 and time for another notes from the turning shop here in Billings, Montana. I'm the Wyoming wood turner. What am I doing in Billings? That's ah, a long story. Anyway, um, a little bit of information on the Four Ways project. This particular little box right here was my first contribution to the Four Ways project along with Tomislav, Mike, and Richard. Anyway, more on that. Um, I've got the April 1st edition all completed. Okay, it's, it's all finished and it's sitting over there. I can't tell you. Uh, subscribe to all of us. Uh, subscribe to each one of our channels and you'll get these videos and you can go back and look at the old ones too that would that would be good um, okay let's see oh you know uh, we had a zoom meeting the group the four uh, members of the four way group had a zoom meeting about two or three weeks ago in you know Richard and Tomislav and Mike Peace and myself that was awesome it was a little bit difficult coordinating the times around the world you know it's like uh, anyway uh, I think Richard Raffin had to get up kind of early and the rest of us you know had it a little bit easier but anyway that was just awesome to listen to some of the stories from Richard especially um, anyway that was really cool snoo snoo what's snoo well what's new in my shop um, here are some little items here. Here's a video. That, of course, is a video. This is a little piece of uh, honey locust with a threaded lid. And somebody asked about the, the lid. And I did dye the lid. It's a piece of cherry, and I dyed it with some uh, Tandy leather dye, which is a, it's a nice alternative. And um, it's a medium brown dye and that came out really nice. This is a, a box that I just finished yesterday. Okay, actually I need to work on the bottom of the base, but here's the lid right here. And this is a piece of, uh, really looks like white oak. And I ebonized the top of that, put a little bit of uh, texturing here and some gilt cream, and that came out really nice. Okay, yeah, I, I like that. <clears throat> and I've got to give credit to um, Mark Baker, the late editor of the Wood Turner, Wood Turning magazine from Great Britain. This lid that's uh, sunken a little bit below the, the level of the rim, like this one here. I saw him demonstrate that, so I sort of borrowed that idea from Mark anyway. We'll set these aside here. I recently purchased um, a tool rest. And this is a, a tool rest offered by Robust Tools. And it's a shear scraping tool rest. And the angle here is a little bit, uh, I don't know, more acute. It's almost straight up and down for shear scraping. And I'm thinking maybe about doing a video comparing the three uh, tool rests that uh, Robust offers. And anyway, I would appreciate your comments on that if you think that would be a good idea. So let me find something else here that I want to show you. All right, now I'm organizing. I'm always organizing tools in my shop and organizing my shop in general. Um, I have several of these carousels, or uh, it's actually a Lazy Susan down here, just some PVC pipe that I have to hold my tools. And yes, this is probably kind of dangerous having these sharp edges up here. So just for demonstration purposes, to show you what I'm doing here. I've got five of these handles with the collet, the robust collet system right here. And these are really, really nice. 
And you know what I found? Uh, I've done some uh, oh, videos on making a tool handle, and I even wrote an article on making a tool handle for the fundamentals of the uh, American wood turner. Anyway, uh, I've also got some steel sitting here. These are these are quarter inch. These are half inch. Uh, what else I got here? But I can simply take one of these out very quickly, put another one in like that, and I don't have, you know, ten different tool handles. I've only got a few. So that's kind of what I've worked on. These are also robust tools, and I've just got those uh, attached to a wooden handle. These, these two particular scraping tools. Uh, so anyway, I'm trying to eliminate some of my other tools and the club probably uh, may have a little sale with my club members here to get rid of some of those other tools. I have so many different composite tool handles that I just, I really don't use. Anyway, there's something else I've been working on. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, what else do we have here? Um, a recent video I just put up was on using a friction drive. And I got a lot of good comments on that. And um, a really good response. It was kind of interesting. I got a lot of good views on that. And I've always used a friction drive. Okay, this is the bowl I turned in that video and I did a little scorching on the inside. It's a uh, ash. Anyway, you can check out that video sometime. Um, what else we got here? Miles Fenske. I hope I am saying that correctly, sir. Um, I watched all four of the series on the boxes, the Four Ways Project. Yours was another great and educational video. Thank you very much. I have one question. At about 37 minutes into the video, it appears there were tool marks on the bottom of my base of that uh, lidded vessel. Yes, there were, and I did take them off. But here's the comment I want to make on this. He has written on here, you can't see that, <laughs> 37 minutes. You know, 37 semicolon zero zero. Okay. I don't know if you can hear my air compressor just came on. And what you do when you have this, you create a link. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second on my videos sometimes. But all I did was I had to just click on that time and it took me right to that spot, okay, where I had the bottom of the vessel, uh, you know, it kind of looked something like this and I had some tool marks down there that were not very pretty. Anyway, uh, thank you, Miles. I did take care of those in the video. Now, um, along those lines, sometimes in my videos, I put a chapter time code in them. And I'm gonna put a link up here, either side. I'm not sure where it's gonna go. This one is on uh, rough turn bowls or something, but I've got a list of of times, okay, at 205, 425, 1219, okay, there's a different topic. And if you want to go down to um, turning the inside of the bowl, that's at 2340. All you got to do is click on that time, it'll take you right to that area, and you don't have to search or anything for it. I don't always do this, but in some videos that are a little bit longer, like this one I think was, you know, like 55 minutes long or something, uh, it, it's helpful for you. Now, where is that? Well, if you are in the video on YouTube and you scroll down, you'll get the description. And sometimes there are links and there are tools you use uh, in the video, uh, something like that. And in some videos, I've got those time codes. And that's almost just like in this last 
comment for miles. All you gotta do is click on the time. It's really, really awesome. Last winter in February was Cortland Hunt. He received a bowl and a pen, and I need to think about a, um, a prize for March. Okay, I finally found a little six inch box elder bowl. I think this will be a, a nice little giveaway prize for March. Anyway, I was having trouble finding something, but here it is. I'll look around here and see what I can find and I'll insert it in this area. You can hear my dog making noise. She does it every time. I don't know what is with her. So the next winter, all you have to do is leave a comment and you are enrolled. I go and do a, a comment picker five days after I upload this video. Anyway, um, Yellowstone Wood Turning Symposium in Billings, Montana. Now if you're around in uh, September 29, 30, and October 1st, we are lucky to have Kip Christensen be our demonstrator for two and a half days. It's going to be awesome. He is fabulous. Wow. And we are so lucky to have him. Uh, the football video. Okay, I had to take it down because of copyright issues. It's, you know, I'm not going to go into detail. I'm not going to tell you um, what the copyright issue was because if I say it, They'll take this video down. Anyway, I'm going to put it up. I may wait until football season to put it up again. I think it's a good video. This is from Daryl Anderson. What chuck do you recommend for the first chuck, the initial chuck you use? Oftentimes, get this in the view of the camera, oftentimes when you buy your first chuck, it'll look something like this. Okay, two inch jaws, uh, this has the two positions, you use little Tommy bars in these holes and you tighten it. I have, I have nothing against that. I think it's a, a nice little chuck, but it's really a chuck designed, in my opinion, more for boxes. You know, if you're trying to turn a bowl out of this or with this chuck, it may be really difficult. Okay. Eh. What's the initial chuck? What's the first chuck you should get? It's kind of like asking a golfer. Uh, what, what's the first golf club you should get? Well, you got to get the whole set. Well, um, and that's extremely expensive if we're wood turners and we want uh, a full array of scroll chucks. It would be really difficult. This, I got a couple here I'll show you. I got 15 chucks sitting around. This is a Vicmark 120. And if you can spend the money, a Vic Mark, this is a 120, this is a 100, and they're awesome, really, really awesome chucks. This is a really hefty set of jaws here, but it's very similar in dimension to these jaws. This is a two inch opening here and a, basically a two inch opening on this one, okay? I have nothing wrong with doing a 16 or 18 inch bowl with these chuck jaws, okay? With this one here, sometimes um, the, the tenon will break or it'll come out of these jaws, they're not very hefty. Another one, while well, I'm on the topic of, of, of chucks, this is um, a set of shark jaws and I've got a couple different sizes for these. In fact, I've got three sizes. One's a three or four inch, and these are probably, I don't know, an inch and a quarter or something. I use these a lot. This is one of my favorite jaw sets. Anyway, yeah, I don't know, that's a tough decision. Which one do you get? All right, now, a couple incidental things as I think about them. Um, another addition to my, my tool kit is this particular um, negative rake box scraper. And you probably know where I got that tool. I just sharpened it a little bit to create another burr on the top of that. High speed steel with a nitrided coating. 
which makes it a little bit harder. Anyway, this is right at, oh, it's between a half an inch and five eighths, but it does fit into this collet. Okay, that's a, actually a five eighths inch collet and it fits in there pretty well. And uh, I think maybe I'll put up a little clip of, of how this tool works. Now I can see this tool is going to be very good for turning on the inside of a box, the left side of the box, as well as the very bottom with a nice burr on there. It's going to be a good cutting tool, so I'm very happy so far. The other, the other topic, and I would like some feedback on this, I've got a cherry log out there that I just started a video on. I'm milling it up, I'm cutting it up into some bowls and some natural edge pieces and whatever. Um, I'm thinking about doing some short videos on um, maybe rough turning a couple boxes out of one little section. Anyway, what do you think about that? Um, I'll put some clips up and show you what I'm doing here. Okay, I just got a text message from my friend Barb, who's a member of our local club here, and she uh, asked me, what is the formula for shine juice? Well, I must have talked about that in a recent video, which I've, I've been using it quite a bit. Um, it's helpful if you get a little container like this. I've got a bunch of these, and I have uh, different finishes in them. Hobby Lobby probably offers those. So the formula for shine juice, right there, and you can see that this needs to be mixed up. Okay, that's important because what you have here is an emulsion. Emulsion. <laughs> and, and that's kind of a cooking term. If you mix oil and vinegar, that's a, an emulsion, and you gotta shake it up if you're making a salad dressing. I'm a cook, that's right. <laughs> so anyway, you have denatured alcohol, dog, Coco. I love that dog, but sometimes I could beat her like a rented mule. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So she can make more noise with these rawhide things. Ah! Formula for shine juice. Um, equal parts. One third, one third, one third denatured alcohol, boiled linseed oil, and shellac. Okay, and here's my container of that, and I've got a, just a little turned lid that fits in there. I just, you know, that's kind of old school, but it works really well. Um, so let's just shake this up, and before you use it, you gotta, you gotta shake it, baby. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's all ready to use. And it really produces a very nice shine. Hence the name Shine Juice. Okay, uh, where are we at here? Oh, you know, I, I want to do a shout out to new subscribers. Okay, uh, Robert Russell, Scott Valley, uh, Joris De Mole, I think that's the way you say that anyway. Um, Robert has been a subscriber for four or five months. Scott, three months. Uh, Joris, uh, one week or two weeks ago. Uh, I appreciate that. And there's a lot of those guys who are just subscribing. And I think the Four Ways Project is really helping with that. Get some new people in from Richard's group or Tomislav's or, or Mike's group uh, of subscribers. And if, you know, speaking of Tomislav, if you uh, want to go see some really, really cool videos, Tomislav does a great job. He's in Croatia. And uh, he's a member of our four-way group here. Um, anyway, Scott Valley, uh, he asked, what sort of stain did I use on that little container with the cherry lid? And also, um... TrueX007 Lee asked the same question. What kind of stain? Well, I use this stain on that. 
This is a, a Tandy leather die. Get that from Tandy Leather. Uh, I'm not sure if I see a, a name on there. Anyway, go to Tandy Leather. You don't need this. There's a lot of other different dyes. I just like the color on that. It's kind of a medium brown, so I use that. Um, I'm at my, my old workbench here. Actually, this is my newer workbench. And I made this shortly after I came to Billings. And I've got five videos showing how I made this bench, if you're interested. This is a handle from my vise over here, okay? And this is a piece of lignum vitae right here. And uh, that looks like Mopani. And I've got, well, I got one end threaded in that handle. And also, you can't see it, but I've got, I've got a drawer on either end of my, my workbench, and the handles are threaded. Eh, you know, not necessary, but fun. Um, Keith writes, very nice. Thank you for keeping up your videos uh, as the years have passed. I've subscribed to many turners, but there are a few I have unsubscribed from due to lack of content. And I think he's paying me a compliment by my videos or the content of my videos. Keep up the enthusiasm and especially your notes from the workshop. Yeah, I, I, this is fun. This is really fun for me. And there's a lot of discussion after I put this video up. Um, okay, four ways video. All the Turners are wonderful in the Four Ways group. Jack Reeves. Um, here's another one from Barb. Barb Ramlo. Love it. Add a, de add a detail just to show I was there. Okay. <laughs> he le left a comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Tom and Annette Ackley left a comment. Uh, talking about shellac or something in their wonderful abrasive paste, which I use quite a bit. And this is another one from uh, Joris. A wonderful collaborative project, seeing all the four ways of turning a project. Many thanks for sharing. Um, Clyde Schuler, a one-month subscriber. Cool. Dick Guggenheim. Faceplate video, D-Way parting tool. Um, oh, okay. Um, I really like your big parting tool. Can you give me a reference for that one? Thank you. I think what he's talking about was one I made out of some, uh, some square stock. It's like half inch by half inch, high speed steel. I think that's which one he's referring to. Um, Ed Sims. Enjoy your videos, thanks. Do you have a source of pear wood? I have a friend who is a source. And that's kind of the way it works. Well, I don't know if we have pear wood in Billings, Montana. You know, um, they do in other parts of the world. Oh, I gotta go get something. I'll be right back. Okay, now this comment is from Mike. And he asked, I really like the use of the golden mean on a vessel. Okay. Now, um, speaking of Mike, this is another Mike. Um, Mike Patrick, who was a member of our group down in Warland, who passed away, oh my gosh, a couple years ago. Mike, we miss you. Anyway, he walked in my shop one day with this device. This is a golden mean uh, caliper, I guess, you know, and it's really nice because the golden mean works on a 1 to 1.6 ratio. Okay, so no matter where you put that, it's the same ratio here and here. And sometimes I use that on different vessels. It works to me really well with hollow forms. So. Mike, your contribution lives on. Thank you so much. Set that aside. That's one of my prized 
tools in this shop is that little golden mean device. I think we're getting down toward the end. And you know what? That was the end. And I still haven't picked out a giveaway for this month. What should I give away? Ah, you got to really think about that and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. So thank you very much for subscribing and tuning in and watching my videos. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll send you some shine juice. I don't know, that probably wouldn't work. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. And I will talk to you next time. Stay tuned for the April 1st Four Ways Project. What are we going to turn? Uh, I don't know. I know. Okay. All right, TMI.